in the previous video. I forgot about this. I thought I was going to take the L at the domain, but I have to take the L here. Initially, I tried to figure out what causes the Raiden Shogun to take over. Turns out, if you get too close to the Rift Hounds, Raiden Shogun will take over. With this in mind, I tried to kill the Rift Hounds outside of the trigger area. But this does not work, since Raiden Shogun takes over once one of the Rift Hounds is killed. During this hour of attempts, I've learned a few things. Leaving the intended area will reset the quest, which means you have to start over from the beginning. I was able to kill both Rift Hounds at the same time, however, two more will spawn and by then you will be restricted to just the Raiden Shogun. The quest consists of two areas, the quest area and the trigger area. The quest area is the location of the quest. Going out of this area will remove Raiden Shogun from your party and reset the quest. The trigger area is where the game realizes you are about to engage with the Rift Hounds. This will forcefully set the party to just the Raiden Shogun. There are are two ways the quest will trigger Raiden Shogun to be in your party by going into the trigger area and by killing one of the Rift Hounds. Even if you're outside of the trigger area, as long as one of the Rift Hounds is killed, the game will forcefully set the party to just the Raiden Shogun. Therefore, the goal for us is to kill a total of four Rift Hounds without using the Raiden Shogun. And our biggest obstacle is to kill the two Electro Rift Hounds without attacking with the Raiden Shogun. Bruh. In my second hour of attempts, I was able to devise a strategy to consistently kill both Rift Hounds at the same time. By pausing the game just before you do the final blow, the game is able to catch up on the damage you deal due to latency. This will kill both Rift Hounds on the frame after you leave the pause menu. Through many attempts of trial and error, I've devised Ito should be the character to deal the final blow since Ito's cow deals the most amount of damage. This is where I started experimenting with obscure game mechanics in order to break this quest. I started by glitching the Rift Hounds to the ocean in order to drown them. However, they do not drown. To ensure it's not due to the water being too shallow, I tried to drown them in deep waters, but they do not drown. So drowning them is out of the question. What about 4 damage? Unfortunately, there's no high cliffs to drop them from. This spot here, which is rather high, is just slightly out of the quest area. So 4 damage is out of the question. What about fire damage? As you know, if Pyro touches grass, grass will burn for a few seconds. But where will I get Pyro? There's some rune enemies nearby, so maybe it will work. No luck, they deal physical damage. I tried the nearby ley line. Maybe it had some pyro enemies? Nope, they are all rune enemies. What about this rune grader over here? No luck either. What about this Fatui over here? It shoots pyro, so it can set the grass on fire. The problem is, this Fatui is slightly too far from the Rift Hounds. Even after spending uncanny amounts of time to get it remotely close to the area, it is still so ridiculously difficult to manage both the Fatui and Rift Hounds, which eventually led to me giving up on the idea. I kept thinking, what other monsters can reliably deal pyro damage? The Pyro Abyss Mage? None of them are remotely close to the Rift Hounds. So that's out of the picture. What about the Pyro Helitro Archer? There's one in this camp right here. But the area it shoots is just too small to be able to deal any meaningful damage. So that's out of the picture as well. What about the Pyro Treasure Hoarder? There's one right here. However, trying to get it to the Radiant Shogun area resulted in it glitching out. So that's out of the picture as well. At this point, I spent about 4 hours trying to brainstorm ideas. Using co-op to kill the Rift Hounds does not work as co-op progress is not saved once you go back to single player. Attempting to change the party just as the Raiden Shogun spawns does not work. The game will just simply not allow you to change the party. Trying to trick the game into thinking I'm performing another quest to glitch my party does not work. It really seemed I'm out of options. Luckily, there was still one final idea up my sleeve which I was going to discover shortly. On the 5th hour, my mental state has begun to go on the decline. But this was not without figuring out a way to deal damage without using the Raiden Shogun. Near the Rift Hounds is a Rune Hunter. The Rune Hunter at first glance deals physical damage. But with enough distance and survive long enough, it will deal its major attack which deals immense pyro damage in its surrounding area. Therefore, if we can lure the Rift Hounds into the flames long enough, they will eventually die from fire damage. But this 
is easier said than done. With the Rune Hunter having limited range, we do not actually have the whole area available to us. Since you can't push the Rune Hunter, the Rune Hunter has to remain on this cliff. Therefore, we must maintain a respectable distance to prevent the Rune Hunter from losing its aggro. Additionally, once grass has burnt for a few seconds, the area will turn grey. Further applications of Hyrule will not set the grass on fire. These two factors combined means we actually have a limited amount of grass to work with in order to burn these rip hounds to death. To increase my chances of success, I've made the decision to lower the world level, which decreases the maximum health of the rip hounds. For anyone interested in how I came to this conclusion, please read the description of this video. The next few hours were spent on how I can increase my chances in order to burn the rip hounds to death. In order to maximize our chances, we need to keep the Raiden Shogun alive as Lime. long as possible. This can be achieved in two ways. By increasing the amount of healing and by reducing the amount of damage we take. To increase the amount of healing, we need to better understand how the fullness system works in this game. Fullness is determined by the quality of food we take. The better the food, the quicker the fullness meter is filled. Since we are trying to increase the amount of food we could take, it's better for us to take lower quality food. And since continuous heal items heal more than instant heal items, the best item we could take is the radish veggie soup. And once we get to the point where fullness is almost full, we shift our focus to eating 3 star delicious continuous heal items to get the maximum healing before we can eat another piece of food. Now we know how we can increase the amount of healing, we move on to how we can reduce the amount of damage we take. There's a few ways to tackle this issue. By eating defense boosting foods, by drinking relevant potions, or by taking stamina food. When it comes to eating defense boosting food, there's two dish which came to mind. The golden crab and fisherman's toast. The golden crab offers superior defense increases. However, it's a really hard dish to make. On the other hand, fisherman's toast offers slight defense increases, but in turn, it's much easier to make. Potions wise, we are looking at the Insulation Potion and the Heat Shield Potion. Insulation Potion to decrease damage taken by Rift Hounds and Heat Shield Potions to decrease the damage taken by the Rune Hunter. Taking a Stamina Food, how will this help with the challenge? As the Raiden Shogun is constantly running around, a decrease in Stamina Consumption helps increase Raiden Shogun's ability to move around, which in turn boosts Raiden Shogun's survival capabilities. The food I used was Battle Bus Ratatouille to decrease Stamina Consumption by 25% and occasionally take noodles or mountain delicacies if I required on spot stamina. All of these optimizations helped with increasing my chances of burning these rip hounds to death, but we have a critical issue. It wasn't remotely close. The rip hounds move too much and their electrical attacks extinguishes any fire. The overload damage they deal does not apply to them. And have I mentioned they have a 20% resistance to every single type of attack in this game? As the hours go by, and as I run out of grass to burn these Rift Hounds with, I've officially came to this conclusion. Even though burning these Rift Hounds to death is possible in theory, the actual application of this happening is close to impossible. And with this, I've officially taken the L and used the Raiden Shogun. Or did I? Even if I was going to take the L for this challenge, I still decided to come up with a compromise. What if I attempted to burn these Rift Hounds to death with half yes. of their health? At least then, I could show in concept if the Rift Hounds do die from fire damage. And surely enough, you actually just die. Actually, just die. Shit. Oh my god. Please. So many times that I've done this. Oh my god. Wait. 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 Ah! No way! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm so done with this game, dude. This is harder than the archery challenge, dude. Oh my god! King! Ah! That is so much pain, dude. I'm so done with this game. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, after spending 11 hours and on my 206th attempt, I have proven the Rift Hounds can be killed without the Raiden Shogun, at least in theory. It wasn't quite what I had in mind spending this amount of time on 4 Rift Hounds, but it is what it is and we are just going to move on. Are you serious?